Bonjour Booktube, my name is Aurélie and this is Meet and Read. Today I thought I would do the Booktube Top 10 tag for you. This tag was created by Jason at Old Blues Chapter and Verse. And uh, though I really enjoyed the concept of the tag, I wasn't sure how I could manage to, to do this, to pick up 10 books from my collection states they are my favorites. And fortunately, I watched Steve Donahue's take on this tag uh, yesterday evening and I uh, really enjoyed Steve's insights, though I was very curious to see what he would pick in his gigantic collection. I was more interested in what he had to say beforehand and that, that's what spurred me into action, you know, and decided me to give this a try and actually when I I had to choose the books it took me two minutes that's it I have to say they are not the 10 books I had anticipated I'm very surprised and even shocked at the the books that actually ended up in that list I guess the way these books were selected in the end is a mix between I love them, they have for some of them literary value, but uh, you will see that's not the main um, point, uh, I guess, that led me to, to choose them. And uh, also, they are concept reads for many of them. I guess I went through my bookshelves uh, in, in a state of mind, you know almost like the house is on fire I, I can only save 10 books which books am i going to to save from the flames and uh, that's that's what i ended up with so in his original tag jason has instructed us to rank the books from our favorite number one to our least favorite of the favorites which is number 10 and uh again i thought having to rank those books will be very difficult and it just I went with the flow and it took me five minutes <laughs> you know so uh, a lot of surprises in this video at least for me <laughs> and um, so what I'm going to do is start with number 10 so I guess you could say my least favorite of the favorites <laughs> I've picked up to finish with the number one <laughs> And uh, so yeah, uh, let's just get started with number 10. So book number 10 is actually a book I read in my childhood and you will see many of these in this list. This is Kaitness l'Elementalist. Kaitness the Elementalist, I guess you could translate it. Uh, this is a book, like a game books, you know, a book uh, of which you are the hero. Uh, this is in the collection Fighting Fantasy, I guess is the, the English uh, translation. And uh, I read many books like this uh, when I was a child and a teenager. I loved them. Uh, this was, you know, a substitute for role playing. Uh, but this time you can play on your own, you know, you don't need comrades and a master. The reason why this one stood out um, to me is uh, because the main character, the, the role you're playing in this book, is actually a female and uh, I really enjoyed that. I guess at some point I got fed up uh, in playing a, a guy, you know, a warrior or a knight or uh, a sorcerer. So um, I really enjoyed that one. I, I didn't know it would make the list. Book number nine is Le Livre de Saphir, the Sapphire book by Gilbert Sinoué. Gilbert Sinoué is a French writer. He is specialized, shall we say, in historical fiction. And this one has to be my favorite of his. Um, it takes place uh, in Spain during the Reconquista at the end of the 16th century. And you see four main characters um, having to decipher enigmas uh, in, in the entire territory of Spain. You have a Franciscan monk Christian, you have a Jew, and you have a Muslim, as well as um, a handmaid 
uh, of Isabel the Catholic. Uh, and they have to find this uh, firebook, which is, um, according to a legend, supposed to reveal what is the true faith and uh, who of the Jews, the Christians or the Muslims, uh, is right in his faith. So um, I really love this book. It's like the Da Vinci Code, but better, in my opinion. Um, and uh, I have very fond memories of reading this for the first time. Actually, this is a signed copy. So it says, for Aurélie, in sign of friendship. And uh, signed by the author, Gilbert Sinou. So um, perhaps I will have the opportunity of talking more about Gilbert Sinoué in future videos because he's one of my favorite contemporary French authors. I love basically everything I have read from him. The Livre de Satire. Uh, this one I'm not surprised uh, that it made the list. Book number eight came as a surprise. <laughs> this is this is Danielle Steele and her book Zoya. I've read this many, many times. It's a comfort read for me. Zoya is a relative of the imperial family in Russia. She has to flee Russia in 1917 when the revolution happened. And we follow her during most of the 20th century after she flees to France. She goes through the First World War the 1929 financial crisis, the Second World War, we see her during the 1950s, 1960s, and um, it's full of epic passion, lots of likable and not so likable characters with um, a historical background, and I really love this book. <laughs> uh, it's not a masterpiece by any stretch of the imagination, but for some reason, and I've read many Daniel Steele books, but for some reason this one stood out and uh, I pick it up and reread it on a regular basis when I need a comfort read, when I need to feel cozy and warm and you know, and so it met the list. <laughs> Book number seven. Uh, came as a surprise as well, even though this is a book I really loved when I read it. Uh, but I haven't read it in 20 years, so this was a little shocking. I'm talking about Marion Villeur Bradley and her Mists of Avalon. In France, it has been split into two parts. The first part is Les Dames du Lac, the Ladies of the Lake, and the second part is actually named the Mists of Avalon, which is the ori original title. I really love this book, those books, you know, this book. Uh, it's full of magic, it's fantasy revamped, shall we say, Arthurian legend, you've got Merlin, Vivian, the Lady of the, lady of the Lake, you've got Morgan the Fay, who is the main character, uh, Arthur, Lancelot, Guinevere, everybody's on the cast <laughs> and um, I really loved how the author managed to give this a new sense of epic, give this romance. Sometimes it's gritty, it's raw, you know, and I loved it. So <laughs> it made the list. <laughs> I have read many fantasy books, some that were better written. For some reason, when I was perusing my shelf, this is the one that almost landed in my hands, The Mist of Avalon. Loved it. And I guess it's perhaps time for a reread, you know. Book number six came as a surprise again, but... Um, it came as a surprise once I backed off and <laughs> watched the, the books I had picked up. And um, I'm talking about Nin Arkunz and his Chassamor, or Watchers in the original title. And for this, I have to blame Doug in this story. 
Um, it's, it revolves around a golden retriever uh, named Anstein and uh, a beast that for some reason wants to destroy him. His intelligence is way beyond what you can expect even from a golden retriever, you know? And yeah, I, I blame the dog for this, um, this choice. I love this book. I have read it many times since I was a teenager. I have read many Dean R. Koons and other uh, terror writers. Stephen King, of course, but also James Herbert, Graham Masterton, and all those guys. I've read dozens of books by them, but this one is the one that stood the test of time. This is the one I still have on my shelf. This is the one I have reread recently, and believe it or not, given the, the genre of this book, this is an absolute comfort read for me. <laughs> and again, blaming the dog. So, surprisingly enough, Watchers is on this list. The fifth book I have already mentioned in my <laughs> Steve Donahue's Badass Tag. This is Pauline Gage, La Dame du Nil, Child of the Morning. This is a um, historical fiction centered around the figure of Queen slash Pharaoh Hatshepsut. I loved this when I read it as a teenager again. Around the same time I read The Mists of Avalon. <laughs> so perhaps there's something there I should explore in therapy. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I loved it. I have read many historical fictions set in ancient Egypt. But for some reason this is the one I prefer. And uh, this is the one I should reread pretty soon, I guess. Uh, there's everything, romance, epic, strong female protagonist, and uh, I, I just loved it. And uh, when I was, you know, picking books for this tag, it just, it landed in my hands. I recommend it if you haven't read it already. This is old school historical fiction, so perhaps it won't be to everybody's taste, but as for me, this is one of my favorite books, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> The fourth book I want to mention, I have had since I was 10. And um, I have read it uh, many, many, many times. I'm talking about this book about Greek and Roman mythology. I'm not even sure I can pick this up in, given the instructions we got. I, I guess so, but uh, you let me know, Jason, if you ever watch this video. Um, fall in love with the pictures, let me show you. You have the pantheon of Greek uh, gods and their equivalent in Roman mythology. And um, yeah, this was my entry to mythology, a topic I'm very fond of. I have read many books about mythology. I could have chosen Ovid and his Metamorphosis, which I have read as well. But for some reason, the one I read when I was a child that I have kept all these years is the one that, that, that made the list. This book from my childhood is, is a gem for me. Uh, yeah, if the apartment <laughs> were on fire, I would definitely <laughs> do my best to save this. So it made the list. Okay guys, so we are entering <laughs> the top three. The third book is 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. This is, of course, a modern classic, uh, considered to be a masterpiece, especially by those who enjoy magical realism, which is my case. I have read this perhaps 20, 25 years ago, uh, fallen in love with it. I was really engaged in the story and the writing style and the crazy stuff that happens in this book. I had no idea I would love magical realism so much. Uh, since I read this, I have read almost everything Gabriel Garcia Marquez has written. And uh, every single time I, I come back to this. This is, this is the one for me. So, of course, I had to save it. <laughs> Book number two is also coming way back from my childhood. This is 
a book I have read many, many, many times. I'm talking about L'Armoire Magique by C.S. Lewis, or The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which is the second book in the Narnia series. I have read this as a standalone when I was a child, and um, the everything spoke to me. The, the adventure, the fact that you could identify to, to the children, especially Lucy. Many scenes are pretty sad and difficult for children, but I, I, I was so engrossed in the story. I just, I, I wasn't bored, you know, from page one. So each time I have revisited this book was a pure joy for me, even as an adult. And uh, the movie is crap, if you ask my opinion, uh, but the book... Um, the book I, I couldn't pass so um, it's it's a, an edition for children of course it's a ni 1980s edition this is the one I, I had you there are pictures here you see Lucy walking in the snow with Mr. Stubnus here the children are having dinner with beavers it's high in, in the list because I have such fond memories attached to this book, uh, even as an adult, and it meant so much to me. It wasn't possible for me to <laughs> leave this out. First <laughs> of my favorites, won't be a surprise to those of you who have seen my French classic book tag. I'm talking about Victor Hugo and his masterpiece Notre Dame de Paris, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. I have gushed about this book in, in the previous tag I mentioned, so I, w I will spare you in this video, but basically I love everything about this book. Uh, I'm a huge Victor Hugo fan to begin with, but this book is um, a love letter to the Middle Ages, to Gothic architecture, to uh, character development, plot, drama, epic, you name it. So, of course, it had to be number one on this list. <laughs> this was a no-brainer. The rest of them were no-brainers, really. That's what I was trying to articulate in my introduction, I guess. But Notre Dame de Paris. And I can't believe this is the only book talking about the Middle Ages, which is my favorite period in human history. Now that I think about it, historical fiction is rather heavy in this list. We have several books pertaining to this particular genre, so I guess there's something I have to to dig here, <laughs> something to understand, but back to Hugo and to this this choice, which was not really a choice, actually, but yeah, I can't believe there are no Moliere in this list, no Zola, no Shakespeare, Shakespeare didn't make the list, and I'm a huge uh, Shakespeare fan, you know, so, so many books I would have expected to make the list, actually didn't make the list. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy uh, I did this tag. So thank you, Jason, for creating it. And thank you, Steve, for giving me the little push I needed to give this a try. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. And I guess I will see you in the next video. Au revoir.